think immersive video is such a big thing right now because it's such a compelling way of making your content more memorable to an audience. I was at an event recently where one of the key speakers was talking about how people don't necessarily remember exactly what you said, but they'll remember how they feel about it. I think that's what immersive video is doing is making your content more compelling by creating an experience and hopefully generating an emotive response from your audience which they're more likely to take away with them. When you're using LED you are giving people an experience as a group. Uh, I think emotion can be a contagious thing, you know, when you have a group of people all experiencing content in the same place at the same time, they can pass on their excitement to each other, you know, make it a much more profound and memorable experience. We can make great immersive environments with LED screens. We can create any shape that you're after. We can create walls, floors, ceilings. We can build LED walls which are curved. We can put right angle corners in. And as the pixel pitch of these screens reduces, we are able to create very high resolution scenery. So when we bring all these elements together, we're able to build full 3D environments where we have video on the floors, the ceilings and the walls and the punters are able to walk straight into those environments and be fully immersed in video. So once we've built our environment, the next challenge is to put the video content on there. There's that old adage that content is king and that's absolutely right in this scenario. We can build anything you like, but if the content isn't right, if it's not compelling or it doesn't have the impact you want, then the whole concept isn't going to work in the way you want it. So we do a lot of work with the content creators in advising on the resolution, the aperture sizes, what's going to work, what's not going to work, uh, how we're going to deliver it, especially things like media server delivery and the way that we map content. So one of the challenges with a 3D environment is working out how we're going to map the content to the screens. What we can't do is just take a simple 2D representation and expect the content to land as it would in a normal screen. What we have to do is pick out all the different elements of the 3D set and map those into a 2D environment. During this process, we also need to take account of the mix of resolutions that we're using to ensure the low-res screens are being fed low-res content and the high-res screens are being fed high-res content. The exciting thing about LED is the impact that you can create with it, you know, the, the, the contrast that you get from it, the brightness and the physical capabilities of what you can build with it in creating immersive spaces, but also what's behind it as well. The infrastructure behind it is, is almost as important as the canvas itself. So once we have our 3D environment designed, we then take the resolutions of all the individual screens and we map those onto our computer outputs. We call this a pixel map. We use the pixel map as a template that we give to the graphics guys so they can deliver their content to us in the format required for the servers we're using. But once we've designed how we want our 3D environment to look, we then need to think about the structural integrity of that environment. We need to design how that environment is going to be built safely, how we're going to make sure it stays up and how it complies with all structural regulations. I think we can make events immersive in, in various different ways, uh, especially with LED. Uh, we do a lot with sets for, say, conferences or more traditional theatre-style events, uh, where you may use more of a, a flattage and, and print set. We can create digital canvases, but we can then make them more immersive for a, a conventional audience by parts surrounding them with content or using lighting fixtures and, and triggering lighting as well as video. We can then bring audio in at the same time uh, and create an immersive experience for people uh, inside of a more traditional setting. So in the future we fully anticipate these scenic elements are going to become more lightweight, they're going to become high resolution, there's going to be a lot more creativity in the shapes that we're able to buy, to build, to use. What that means is immersive environments in the future are only going to become bigger, more creative and higher resolution than they are today. Ultimately, it's our job to advise, to bring new ideas to the table and hopefully be part of a process where the people we work with are pushing the boundaries of what they knew was capable for their events. 